Hey guys, this is Bradicus coming to you today with an advanced tactics guide for Romance of the Three Kingdoms 14. Today we are going to be discussing maneuverability, movement, and terrain. It is important to understand that maneuverability is an absolute core statistic of the game. It determines how fast your units move around the map. There are a lot of factors and variables in maneuver and movement. It is important to note that the actual maneuver statistic does not directly translate into Hex's move per turn. There is an algorithm that must exist that does calculate that stat into Hex's move. What it is, I do not know and I did not research. There are talent and abilities that do affect the maneuver stat, for instance the dash talent. If any of these talents or stats do change the base movement, you will see a blue number that shows up as an increase in the info tab where it is marked as maneuver. Another major variable in this discussion is terrain. Terrain has a direct impact and will adjust your maneuverability as a unit goes through it. Some terrain types have significantly more direct impact on maneuver than others. The last variable in this maneuver equation is formations. As you all know, some formations move quicker than others and some formations move quicker than others in different terrain types. I took some time to test these variables and I was able to gather enough data to confidently state what units do best in certain terrain types. My testing consisted of marching different units with a unit size of a thousand troops through different terrain types, developing an average movement for each formation. Also, I found that unit size doesn't seem to impact movement from the testing I performed. So let's go over the different terrain types first and look at what terrain is the easiest to move through in a descending order. First is Highway. Highway allows for the fastest movement for any of the formations. It is the core transport and movement veins throughout the entire map. Flat terrain is scattered throughout the map and is the most common terrain type. Most units will generally move quickly through flat terrain. It doesn't seem to have any major impact on movement whatsoever, except for when exiting out of Highway. Next is sand. Sand is found most commonly through the northwest part of the map. That's where we start to see maneuverability start to drop and have a significant impact on certain formations. On average, all formations lose three hexes moved per turn while marching through sand compared to flatland. Moving on to swamp, swamp is scattered throughout the map but is found in high density on the eastern side of central China. On average, most formations lose four hexes per turn compared to flatland while marching through swamp. Next, we have woods and mountains. This terrain type can be found everywhere on the map. The movement is the same for both terrain types from the information I've gathered. This is where we start to see the most significant impact on movement, with most units losing around five hexes per turn compared to flatlands, with the exception of all and snake. Mountain pass, I did test, but it is very hard to test it because it's only found in a few spots on the map and testing really didn't give any accurate numbers because most mountain paths are short or have cores along the route. So I'm not really gonna give any data on there. I assume you move a little bit faster than you do through the mountains in a mountain path. Lastly, I tested Poison Swamp. Poison Swamp is only found in the Southwest region of the map and has the most drastic impact on movement. It reduces movement by approximately six to seven hexes per turn compared to flatland. Also, while moving through Poison Swamp, you lose on average about a thousand troops per turn. Now let's look at formations and which formations are the fastest and the role they play in this discussion. I'm gonna go ahead now and list the formations in descending order from quickest to slowest. The all formation is on average the fastest formation that is available. It sacrifices tactics for speed. It moves quite a bit faster than every other formation in almost all terrain types and can move up to 23 hexes per turn on highways and averages 15 hexes per turn on flatlands. It does equally well on sand and swamp with an average of 11 hexes per turn moved and matches snake with a movement of seven hexes per turn in woods and mountains. It takes a large hit in Poison Swamp with a slow four hexes per turn, but moves quite faster than other units in that terrain type. All has this really unique place in the formations. It moves so fast that it is great for supporting troops on the field, capturing cores quickly, or cutting off area of control. Following all as the second fastest formation is Arrow. Arrow averages 17 hexes per turn on highway and a solid 11 hexes per turn on flatlands. 
It takes a hit when you move into sand with an average of 8 hexes per turn. Marching through swamps has even more reduction at 7 hexes per turn and really slows down in woods and mountains with an average of 5 hexes per turn. Like other formations, it is reduced the most in poison swamps with an average movement of 3 hexes per turn. Arrow is an interesting formation in that it's not meant to take hits like ring or fish. I think the formation does best when it's brought from the back to flank and you're using provoke with another hefty unit. Personally, I don't use it much. I can see using officers with fire talents or having a unit with high intelligence move in and popping out abilities as a good use for this formation. Continuing on, we are now at the snake formation. Snake averages 16 hexes per turn on highways and 10 hexes per turn on flatlands. It does generally good on sand with an average of 8 hexes per turn. Moving into swamp, woods, and mountains, it is reduced to 7 hexes per turn, but that's where it really shines. The fact that it can move quick and it also has talents that it can use. Once in poison swamps, you do see a reduction though down to 3 hexes per turn. Snake like the arrow formation doesn't seem to take hits to the face very well. I usually use it to grab cores, but I feel like it falls in the same category as arrow and needs to be used when arrow is really not an option in mountains and woods. Next is the fish formation. The fish formation is a core formation. It moves on average fairly quickly through most terrain types, making it a well-rounded unit. On average, it moves 13 hexes per turn on highway, and on flatlands, the fish formation moves at a reasonable average rate of 9 hexes per turn. Fish formation starts to slow down when you get into sand with an average movement of 6 hexes per turn. We start to see it drastically slow down when you get into swamp with a movement rate of about 5 hexes per turn. Getting into woods and mountains is where you start to see fish get bogged down with a movement rate of around 4 hexes per turn. Once you get into poison swamps, fish slows down to a crawl at 2 hexes per turn. Fish is a more balanced formation that has the flexibility to take hits and be aggressive. I tend to use this formation as one of my core formations, even if it marches slow. Then there is crane formation. Crane does move at a nice pace on highway at 12 hexes per turn, making it relatively fast to move around. On flatlands, it moves around 8 hexes per turn, which is not bad for the formation as it starts to slow down much more on other terrain types. In sand, it starts to move much slower at 6 hexes per turn. In swamp, it's even slower and moves 5 hexes per turn. And then in woods and mountains, it really starts to crawl at 4 hexes per turn. Poison Swamp reduces its movement down to 2 hexes per turn. I personally don't like the crane formation. I feel it's too slow to do what it's supposed to do. When pushing your area of control, there are usually multiple terrain types to deal with, and this unit only meets that function when you directly control the unit and avoid slower terrains. The only time I tend to use it is when I'm trying to widen my area of control when I'm marching on a city, or if I don't have any other option at that point in time. If Crane was a little faster, I could see more use for it. Out of all the other formations though, I do see Crane as the weakest formation. Last, we have Goose in the Ring formation. Each formation moves around the same with slight differences in flat terrain. Starting with Highway, both move an average of 11 hexes per turn. Moving into the Flatlands though, the Ring formation moves on an average of 8 hexes per turn and Goose moves 7. Next, with Sand, we start to see a significant drop with both moving 5 hexes per turn. Swamp is even slower with both moving an average of 4 hexes per turn. These two units get bogged down when moving into woods and mountains, with the movement getting reduced to 3 hexes per turn. Both move around 2 hexes per turn in Poison Swamp, so it is generally a good idea to avoid it. As you probably know, Goose and Ring are my go-to units. Ring has a strong defense while Goose can attack at range. Two Ring units and a Goose unit I feel is the core to my army. The downfall is that they're slow. They need to be kept on highways and flatlands when you can. When marching on swamp, woods, and mountains, it may be better to consider replacing them with other faster formations like fish. So in conclusion here, I think it is really important to take maneuverability in account as you're marching your units out and around the map. Certain formations are going to allow you to achieve your goals on certain terrain types in a much more efficient manner without losing troops or wasting supply. 
Also, using certain talents and abilities to take a slow unit and increase their speed is definitely viable and should be used at every opportunity. I think as you sit and consider all these variables and how they apply to the game and start using them properly, you will definitely become a better player in the long run, specifically when we get higher difficulty levels in the game. So anyways, guys, go ahead, like, subscribe, let me know what you think, and you all have a wonderful day.